is a healer. I'm trying. Self-inflicted. Adam and Eve could have eaten anything they wanted in the garden, but they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It was self-inflicted. And there's many people in the Bible, because I don't want to get in your business, but I can even talk about myself. Sometimes the reason why I'm broke today is because of self-inflicted, poor decisions, trying to keep up with Bishop Iglehart. Trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to keep up with somebody else. Instead of being happy with what, who God made you, I'm trying to keep up with everybody else. I'm trying. I'm trying. The amen lady didn't say amen, so I didn't do too good. Then I'm going to try something else. All right. I told you to preach, I wasn't scared. I'm going to use it. Self-inflicted. We put ourselves in situations and then we wonder why God sometimes lets us go through all these things when we've named it and claimed it and grabbed it and everything else. But God is wanting to let us know that if I have not ordered you to go that direction, I will allow you to bump your head so you can recognize, one, that I am God, and two, I know what I'm doing. I'm trying. The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 12, David is getting tired of people just running their mouth. People are tired of running their mouth. It's easy to critique the leader when that's not your responsibility. It's easy to be a backseat driver when you're not the one driving. It's easy to show you my faults because I'm the one that's on display. And sometimes, brother preacher, we're getting tired even in the church when we should be praying for one another. We uh, just run our mouth. I, I, I'll pray for you, Brother Parker, but while I'm praying, I'm running my mouth. I'm saying I have your back, but I'm using your back as a target for all the knives. But then you better not get mad because you said you were saved. And that is my insurance policy. I can flip the script too. Sometimes we want to cut, we want the other person to be saved so we can cut up and we can expect that they ain't going to do something. But guess what? If you can cut up, what makes you think they can't cut up too? And nobody said amen on that one. Peter tells us that if we're going to suffer, that we're not to suffer someone that is a busybody in other men's matters. All right, I moved that point. I thought I had a good point right there. That made me happy when I read that. Praise the Lord. But sometimes when we have stress, when we have stress, we deal with it in the wrong way. And Paul was just like David. He had some stress in his life. And those of you that's ever read about the life of, of, of Paul, you know that when he was blinded on his road to Emmaus, God had to tell the preacher, look, the man that I'm bringing you is going to suffer a lot for the gospel's sake. And I don't know why suffering now has lost its luster. I know why. Because church folk listen to unsaved folk just as fast as they listen to saved folk. I'll say that again. I, I have a problem when, when, when certain comedians can, can MC the celebration of gospel year after year after year after year. And I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but... The, the artists are becoming more and more secular. Thank you, sister. At least I got one amen. They're becoming more and more secular. So then how then can I draw a resource or how can I draw inspiration from something that is ungodly? It is because we have been in such a stressful situation that we have allowed ourselves to go back to the things that we are comfortable with. Don't fool yourself that every sin that you ask God to forgive for, you didn't enjoy some of these things we enjoy doing. That's why it's so hard sometimes for God to pull it out of us. Okay, maybe that's just me. Can I just be honest with you young people? Can we keep it 100 plus? Some of the stuff that we do is old folk. Y'all been doing the same thing and we're telling you it's wrong. And then when you say, well, you're doing it, it's still wrong. 
Okay, it's wrong when I did it in the 50s, it's wrong when I did it in the 60s, it's wrong when I did it in the 90s, it's wrong when I did it in the 2000s, and if you do it in century 22, it's still going to be wrong. But I'm here to let you know that regardless of what comes your way, you need to just calm down and shake it off. In Acts chapter 28, we find Paul coming out of a bad situation. But the story really doesn't start there because it starts in Acts chapter 21. Paul is going to church and he has some Gentile friends and he tells the Gentiles, look, man, it's hot right now. I can't go to church without causing some problems. So what I need you to do is I need you to act like you are a Jew. Maybe y'all never read that before. I need you to act like you are a Jew so we can go in and serve the Lord. But it still caused some problems. Sometimes when people hate you, they hate you regardless of what you do. We can turn around and be two-faced, three-faced, four-faced, trying to accommodate you, but you just hate me. It's not that you don't like me, you just hate me. So guess what, Brother Parker? I'm not going to waste my energy trying to accommodate you and follow peace with you when I know you are my enemy. All right? When Jesus said, turn the other cheek, he wasn't saying turn the other cheek to be a punk. He said, turn the other cheek to show them that you aren't a punk. I'm trying. We find... In Acts chapter 23 through 27, Paul has been in prison over two years trying to find something wrong with him. They're taking him to judgment hall, to judgment hall, trying to press charges, and they couldn't get nothing to stick. Paul was a man that knew stress, but one thing that we found in all of the stress that he kept preaching. And one thing that I found out, Brother Walker, that whenever I self-inflict myself, God still uses my self-inflicted wounds as testimonies. Now, I may not get the blessing and the anointing, but I will get the experience and the wisdom. See, you've got to understand that when God sends you through something, he is trying to upgrade your anointing. I wish you would tell somebody, say, neighbor, the next time God sends you through something, he's just trying to upgrade your anointing. He's just trying to upgrade it. If we don't go through nothing, then God can't bless us. See, sometimes when we go through stuff, God is trying to do one or two things. He's trying to say that you are worthy for what you have or that you're worthy for something else. Maybe that's just me. In Acts chapter 27, we find how Paul now is in the storm. And you've read the storm. It's the name of the storm was Eurachlid, and it was something that was not uncommon because of the seas and the time of the season. Praise the Lord. But God told Paul a word. And he said that if you stay with the ship, no one will be lost. Well, sometimes I find when I'm in the middle of my stress storm, I lose some friends. Sometimes in the middle of my stress storm, I lose some family members. Sometimes in the middle of my stress storm, I lose some church folk. But one thing that I found out, Mother Walker, that whenever I go through my stress storm, that there was always at least one person with me. The man talked about last week, goodness and mercy. I thank God for goodness and mercy. But sometimes I can't find goodness and mercy. But there's never a person or there's never a time in my life where Jesus has never left me. One thing that God has always said is that I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even though you're in the midst of the storm, I'm still in the ship. I may be asleep, but I'm still in the ship. All you got to do is just wake me up. Yes, God. And I will calm the storm and I will cease the wind. Is there anybody in here that's ever had to wake Jesus up in your situation? Usually it's when a time where you're ready to give up, give out, and give in. But then that's when the Holy Ghost says, wait a minute. Have you tried Jesus? Give me ten more minutes and I'm out your way. The Bible says that they come out of the storm. They come out of the storm and Paul begins to put some 
some, some, some sticks together to get some heat. Yes, God, I love you today. And the Bible says that when he tried to put the sticks together, that that's when the snake came out of the fire. That brings me to my first point that you need to calm down. Why am I calming down? Because the situation is not as bad as you think it is. I know that when you first saw the snake, I can imagine in Paul's mind, what else is going to happen? What else can go wrong? What else is the devil going to throw at me? Lord, how much can I take? Well, I'm here to let you know, Brother Walker, that if God allows you to, to come your way, you can handle it. If God sent it your way, you can take it. You can't be defeated. You can't be conquered. Because the Bible says that we are more. That means that it's not a matter if you won or lost, but how bad did you win? The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 28, around the seventh verse, he said that they might come one way. Yes, God. But because of the favor and the anointing in your life, they're going to run seven ways. Maybe that's just me. I'm getting excited on my own preaching. I don't know if that's possible. They may come at you, my sister, one way, but they're going to run seven ways. Meaning that when we came at you, we were unified. We're going to get you at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, after school, on the football field. But you jumped them jokers so bad they had to run. And now they are embarrassed. The Bible says that after he did that, that brings me to my second point, that you've got to shake it off. See, one thing that you have to understand is that the snake didn't come out of the fire until the fire was lit. And you've got to understand sometimes when you begin to get close to God, the devil is not going to allow you to get close to him. The devil is not going to just sit there and let you build a prayer life. The devil is not going to let you build a fasting life. The devil is not going to allow you to get consecrated. So he's going to do whatever he has to do to get you away from God. But I'm here to let you know today that if you just calm down and shake it off, you have the power. Thank you, Lord. You have the victory. Greater is he that's in you. That's he that's in the world. Thank you, brother preacher. I'm here to let you know that you might be in it, but it's not in you. You might have come out of your storm and the devil may have thrown a snake your way, but when the devil bites you, the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall tread on serpents. They shall take up serpents. Why? Because I got God on the inside of me. I may be in the storm, but the storm is not in me. Some of us, the devil may try to get us on the outside, but that's just a setup for trying to do on the inside. Bad relationship, but I'm not depressed. Bad relationship, but I'm not bitter. Yeah, you talked about me. Yeah, I lost my promotion, but I'm not bitter. Because I got God on the inside. The Bible says uh, we are troubled on every side, uh, yet not distressed, uh, perplexed, uh, yet not in despair, uh, persecuted, uh, but not forsaken, uh, cast down, uh, but not destroyed. Uh, tell your neighbor, I may be in the storm, but the storm is not in me. It may be rough, uh, but rough is not in me. It may be dark, but dark is not in me. And if I could really preach, I would change my sermon and I would say, calm down, shake it off, and send it back. Send it back. One thing that I love about this story is that when he shook off the snake, he sent the snake back from the fire. And I grew up in a church when they would cast out the devil, they would bind him and send him back to the lake. Is there anybody in here in Children's Memorial that has the power to send the devil back where he came? Tell your neighbor, send it back. Come on, send it back. Send it back. Back to the pit. Depression has to go. High blood pressure has to go. Cancer has to go. Back to the pit. 
Back to the lake. Back to your enemies. Back to your foes. Back to the devil. I don't care what your enemy might be. In the Old Testament, it was the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and the Hazarites. In 21st century, it's the Walkers and the Car. Thank you, Lord. It's the Browns and the Jacksons. But I'm here to tell you today that if God be for you, touch two or three people say, if God is for you, he's more than the world against you. Hallelujah. I'm here to let you know that God needs us to calm down. Things aren't as bad as we try to make them out to be. We need you to shake it off because you're not hit as hard as you thought you were. But send it back because you're greater than you are. Because you have connected to God. And the Bible says that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I'm here to let you know you've got power on the inside of you. You don't need the bottle because you've got God. You don't need the gun because you've got God. You don't need drugs. You've got God. And we'll take it even a step further. You don't need a title. You don't need a position because you've got God. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. That means I'd rather be an usher than a backslidden preacher. I'd rather be a greeter than a Jack Snivick preacher. I'd rather be a member than a prayer warrior that can't pray. I'd rather just be a brother than a preacher that can't pray. Tell your neighbor, calm down, shake it off, send it back. This is my year. I've got power. This is my year of divine order. This is my year. Whatever I say, it will happen. Whatever I put my hands on, I shall be prosperous. Why? Because I've got God on the inside of me. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Last point, and I'm taking my seat. The Bible said that when the world began to see what Paul was going through, he said that when you, he came out of it, they said, you must be a God. Hallelujah. You must be a God. Because I've seen that viper bite other people. And they die. But what's so different about you? Why is it when, when people stab you in the back, you keep on going? Why is it when I try to pull you down, you keep on going? Well, do you mind if I tell you my testimony? First, give an honor to God, to the pastor's saints and friends. I bring you greetings from the Freedom Church of God in Christ, where my pastor is the Wayne Aaron Robbins Jr. I'm here to let you know that one day, I went to a meeting one night, and my heart wasn't right, and I got a blood transfusion. I got the blood of Jesus coursing through my veins. And so no matter how you hold me down, God is picking me up. And some of us, we say, God, move my mountain. But the old saints knew what it meant to have a prayer life, knew what it meant to consecrate. They wrote the song that said, God, don't move my mountain, but give me the strength to climb. Sometimes God wants us to keep climbing the mountain. Sometimes God wants us to quit asking for healing. Sometimes God wants us to keep moving because if God is for you, there's no devil, no imp, no ministry, no man, no woman can keep you from doing what God wants you to do. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see you in the future. Can you look much better than you do right now? Why do I say that? I know that's a catchphrase made famous by our presiding bishop. But sometimes these catchphrases 
You've got to let him get on the inside of you. You can't say that unless you've got some war scars. You've got some war scars. And I'm speaking from experience. Brother Walker, the stuff you're going through right now, I'm here to let you know that I went through the same thing. And because God was faithful to me, he's going to be faithful to you. Y'all not hearing me in this place. We don't want to go through nothing because we don't want God to really bless us. We don't want God to really bless us. We don't want God to really bless us. Anointing costs. I'll say this again. Anointing costs. Brother Preacher, we suffer for these red and black cords. They, they don't know some of the stuff that we go through wearing these red and black cords. They're asleep, but we still move them. It costs Brother Parker to do what you do. I wish I could do what you do, but I can't. And so since I can't, I celebrate you. But watch this. What happens, though, is people become intimidated. Where's the camera? Which camera's on? I want to say this in the camera. When you are intimidated, you are acknowledging your shortcomings. Boom, there it is. If you allow yourself to be intimidated, you are acknowledging that you are better or you're acknowledging your own shortcomings. But where is the wisdom in acknowledging your shortcoming when you have the same source as the next person? I don't know why we do that in church. We get intimidated. But we're connected to the same source. We're connected to the same source. And when someone pats you on the back, Brother Preacher, you did a good job. Praise God. God gets the glory. And we see this with our brother Paul. Because of what he went through, he was able to heal those that were there. And it didn't stop the ministry. And for those of us that studied the life of Paul, this was just one chapter in a long encyclopedia of his suffering. He wasn't done suffering. Some of us, I don't, I don't know what the protocol is. As far as altar call, do we just get back to the pastor? Last point, I promise you, I'm taking my seat. When God sends you through stuff, he is allowing people to see your life. To show them the same way he was faithful to you, he will be faithful to them. But why, Brother Walker, would I want to join the Navy and everything you tell me about the Navy is horrible? Why? Why would someone come to God when you got preachers cussing and fighting up a storm? Divorces is higher in the church than it is on the outside. Why would I want to come to God? I can't answer that one. But I will tell you this. Like the old song says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. I don't know everything, but I do know this. God has never left me, and he has never forsaken me. You pray my strength in the Lord. I think that we've heard a, a motivated message. Oh, glory to God. Uh, everybody in here has been attacked by some form or fashion of some enemy some problems, but yet God has been able to give us what we call integrity and fortitude and faith in him that I don't care what's happening. I believe that it'll be better after a while. Anybody believe it'll be better? Touch your neighbor say it's going to be better. It's going to be better. Praise God. I, I, very beautiful. When you look at the 28th chapter of Acts, it shows you some things that happened. Praise God. And that when people see you being attacked, they didn't nobody come to Paul's aid. They delivered, praise God, an epitaph that his obituary was now. They said in a few minutes they'd be dead. And then when he shook it off, hallelujah, turn around to somebody. Say, I've been attacked, but I'm going to shake it off. 
I've been lied on, but I'm going to shake it off. I've been talked about, but I'm going to shake it off. I'm not going to let you, pray God, stop my venture to heaven. I'm going to give God the praise. Come on and give God some praise. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that give him some praise. Look where he brought you from. Look how good he's been to you. But you ought to tell him thank you. Anna, Anna. Ina na shanda. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just tell him, had not it been for the Lord who is on our side. Oh, I wish I'd get a witness right now. Somebody ought to get up now. Said, I would have been dead in my grave, but God delivered me. Come on, tell him thank you. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. Brothers and sisters, I need to do something. Brother James Davison, I just need you to come up right quickly. Praise God. Brother James Davison, I saw the Lord bless him. Praise God, it was about three weeks ago. God just took over. Praise God. Every problem he'd been through, praise God, God was right there to abate the problem. Praise God. I saw him accept God. Praise God. And then we would be less of us if we can't follow through. This is what church is all about. Praise God. No, it's not you just getting your little thing and leaving out, talking about, oh, we had good church today. It's about helping one another. God saves you to be a disciple. Y'all don't hear me. How do you be a disciple? How you carry yourself? How do you work with people? How do you live with people? Praise God. See, some of your next door neighbor don't know you're saved. Oh, hallelujah. Brother James, are you still holding on? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ought to get happy right now. Come on, let's, let's give God some praise. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. The manifestation of the Spirit must be operated according to the dictates of God. Y'all don't hear me. See, the Spirit of God is not in contrary with anything because nothing can be of God except God allows it. And anything outside of the preview of God is contrary to God. I don't believe I have a witness in here. I don't care. I don't care how saved you think you are. But when you begin to operate on your own, you're outside of God's domain. Hallelujah. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much gifts you have. When you operate outside of the dominion of God, you are out of order. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Now, we need to understand. Turn around to church and say he's going to say something. Your only job as being a saint of God is to win other people to God. I don't believe, I, I know I can't get no amen out of that. Hello, hello. You're not in here to lift yourself. Only body that said be lifted up was Jesus. Said, I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He didn't say Lily and Mary and Bubba and John. He said that it is he that must be lifted up. Oh, I don't believe I have a witness. I don't believe I have a witness. I don't believe I have a witness. Praise God. I wanted James to come up because I'm concerned about his future. See, sometimes, you know, we, we mess up. We get, a, we get a church, we get brought in, and then we just leave them there. But let's go back to the old way. Anybody remember the old way? Y'all don't hear me. Pray God, when Sunday after Sunday, they brought you back to the altar. Y'all don't hear me. Night after night, they brought you back to the altar. What were they doing? Pray God, they were perfecting you. Pray God, they were endowing and instilling the principles of salvation in you. Hallelujah. I know we're in a microwave age now where everybody says, Turn it on for 30 seconds and it's ready. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take more than that. It's going to take more than that. I want the brothers to come around. We're just going to pray again for Brother James. Pray God. And I'm not accusing him of anything. But what we did in the old days, how many of y'all remember this? Come on up, sisters too. Praise God. Let's pray for this brother. How many of y'all remember? I remember when I used to get up, I said, I haven't done nothing. And they saying, give God a chance. Bless his name, said Jesus. 
Pray God. And I said, when I said Jesus last week, but I found out the more you said Jesus, the more Jesus will be in you. The more you try him, the more he'll be with you. Pray God, the more you confess him, the more he'll be lifted up. Come on and give God some praise in here. Come on and give God some praise.